A ninth grade student brutally murders his algebra teacher, and believe me, just when you think that this story can't get any more disturbing, it does. So here's your trigger warning. First, I'm gonna talk about the case itself, and then we're gonna get into the astrology of it, and you already know that 18 and 22 degrees has made an appearance again. Philip Chisholm was born on January 21st, 1999, which makes him an Aquarius with a Pisces moon, but we'll get to that. And on October 22nd, 2013, he woke up with murder on his mind, with his eye really close to his high school teacher, Colleen Ritzer. Colleen was born on May 13th, 1989, and teaching wasn't just her job, it was her whole entire life. She loved her students, she loved her job. She was one of the most caring teachers that any student has ever had. She even made Twitter accounts where all the students can come and read inspirational quotes and updates on the tests they were having. On the day of her murder, she decided to stay after school and open up her classroom to any student that wished to get some extra help. Help. She did this often and she didn't have to do this. She just wanted to help her students as much as possible. The only students that chose to go to her classroom that day was Philip Chisholm and one other teenage girl. And the only reason why that other teenage girl was there was because she said that Colleen was her favorite teacher and she didn't want to leave her because they were about to have a three-day weekend and she just wanted to hang out with her favorite teacher for a little extra longer. During their class, Colleen Ritzer stepped out of the classroom to talk to one of her teacher friends. And today was actually Buddy's Day. You see how they're both wearing purple? They were supposed to wear the same color their shirt as their favorite teacher buddy and they were talking about a couple different things but when the teacher asked her who was in the classroom with her that day she told her about the girl and she also said Philip Chisholm but then she said she didn't even know why Philip was in there because he was doing great in her class just a few minutes later, the same security footage would show Colleen walking into the bathroom and Philip Chisholm following after her. In the next video, I will show that footage and talk about what actually happened in that bathroom. Before I tell you how he murdered his teacher, let's look at the security footage of that day. Colleen is walking out. She waves to a teacher friend of hers. Then Philip comes out right after her, looks back and forth, and then checks his pocket. He's checking for his box cutter that he brought that day. You see Colleen walking into the bathroom. Philip notices he's on camera, goes inside, comes back out with his hood on like that fucking matters. Oh God, he's walking into the bathroom. He pulls out gloves, some white gloves, and you'll see him putting them on right before he enters into the bathroom. And then check this out, 11 minutes after, another student actually walks into the bathroom and then walks right back out. What she said she saw in there was a naked butt, Philip's naked ass. And she didn't know what was happening, so she just walked out. She just thought, and then Philip comes out after her. He's walking out. Look at his hand. Did you see that? You see that? What does that look like? I'm not even going to say it in case TikTok blocks me, but you'll see it again here. Check his hand out. I'm going to get into some of the details of the murder in a little bit, but Philip didn't only kill his teacher in there. He actually SA'd her. And here he is frantically running around the school. Look at this poor teacher just walking, not knowing what the fuck just happened. Philip goes back into the classroom, walks back out with all of his stuff. Also, he took Colleen's stuff with him as well. And I'll tell you what he did after. But literally, guys, keep watching because this shit, you haven't even seen the worst of it yet. He comes back in the school with a face mask on. But look, uh-oh. He's about to walk into the bathroom. Uh-oh, he runs into one of his friends. So he is trying to like steer his friend away from the bathroom. And his friend's like, what the fuck, dude? Like, what are you doing? He's acting all weird. And then here comes Philip Chisholm with a garbage can, rolling it into the bathroom. Keep in mind, this is all taking place at school. At school, there are still teachers, there are still students there. And then you can't, he comes out a few minutes later with a face mask over his head. It looks like he's struggling a little bit here. And this is pre-COVID. It wasn't normal for people to be wearing masks. He's just walking throughout the school with his teacher's dead 
body in the garbage can walking past people. These people have no idea what's taking place right now. This is so disturbing. He then takes his teacher's lifeless body into the woods and does some unthinkable things to it. And I'll get in. So what did Philip Chisholm actually do to his teacher in the bathroom? Keep in mind though, guys, I don't know if you remember what happened to my last series. TikTok deleted like three videos and I was banned for like a month. So what I'm about to say is a watered down version. As soon as he entered into the bathroom, he karate chopped his teacher and then prote proceeded to her and then he also essayed her. And while he was doing this, he was her throat with a box cutter. I already know I said this at the beginning of this series, but I need to say it again. What I'm about to say is extremely disturbing, so big trigger warning. After taking his teacher's lifeless body out of the bathroom in a garbage can, he brought her into the woods. Philip then took his teacher out of the garbage, took off all of her clothes, laid her on the ground, sp spread open stuff, and essayed her with a tree branch. <sighs> this was a picture I found when I was looking up the court case. And then this demented, sick fuck decided to leave a note behind that said, I hate you all. Believe me, we fucking hate you too, loser. And then remember when we saw Philip go back into the classroom and get his things? Well, he also took Colleen's credit cards and her ID. And you'll never guess what the fuck he did after. He went to the movie theaters and used her credit card to watch himself a little cinematic flick. He also went to BJ's and stole a knife so many other things. I will get into what he did in the next video and how he ended up getting caught. The stupid fuck. Now, even though the school security footage did catch all the events leading up to his teacher's murder, the police did not know this yet. The school had just gotten a new security system, so it took them hours to actually get the footage. So they didn't even know that Colleen was deceased at this point. And that Philip was involved. So fast forward a couple hours, Philip's mom was worried sick about him. She had no idea where he was, so she reported him missing. And at around 12 o'clock at night, police found Chisholm walking down a abandoned road. So at first, the police were excited that they found him. They had been looking for him all day. But then when they searched his belongings, they found Colleen's credit cards and IDs and a pair of bloody women's underwear. And when the police asked him where he got this from, all he said was, the girls. So he gets arrested and when court finally came, his defense attorney tried to fight that he wasn't fit to stand trial. She tried to say that he had uh, paranoid delusions, also schizophrenia. But the problem with that is, is that onset of schizophrenia usually doesn't come until like 18 years old. Philip was only 14 at the time. And they said, the prosecution said that it was very unlikely that he had that going on at the time of her murder. The judge decided that he was in fact fit to stand trial and he was convicted uh, for a life sentence, but with the possibility of parole after 25 years. Here's the good thing though, well not really good, but ugh. even though for his murder he got life with the probability of parole, he had a separate charge, S. A, which he got a mandatory 40 years for. Now this wasn't just a isolated incident. Philip Chisholm tried to pull some shit with his social worker while he was waiting for his trial to begin. He grabbed the social worker by the throat and he had, I think it was a pencil, and tried to stab her. This is while he was waiting for to be tried for Colleen. In the next video, we are going to be looking at the birth chart. On today's episode of True Crime Astrology, we are looking at Philip Chisholm's, I mean Chisholm's, birth chart. And if you don't know who Philip Chisholm is, you can read that right there, or I have a couple of videos about him on my page. 
Philip is an Aquarius with his sun exactly conjunct Neptune. Now we have a couple different options when we have this placement. Let me tell you a couple of them. This is a little Neptune scale that I made that can range anywhere from spiritual enlightenment, creativity, all the way down to depersonalization, addiction, paranoid delusions. Where a person falls on that scale really depends on their upbringing, their own self-awareness, but also the aspects that it's making. And his Sun and Neptune conjunction is making a T-square to Saturn down to Mars. The apex is at the Sun and Neptune, which is, um, not good news. His Mars and his Saturn are both in fall positions. And fall positions mean that these planets do not like to be in the signs that they're in. And Mars is like your actions. Mars is the warrior for the sun, what drives you. Saturn can be attributed to your decision making, knowing right from wrong. And when they're making an opposition, he does not know right from wrong, or even if he did know right from wrong, he doesn't give a fuck. He will do anything without consequence, without fearing consequence. Now for the kicker, his Mercury, which is the planet of the mind, your inner computer, is at 22 degrees, the kill or be killed degree. Now, just because you have this degree doesn't mean you're going to go and commit murders, but with everything combined in this chart, it gave him a big fucking push. His North Node, which is your life purpose, is also at 22 degrees. And now let's look at his Lilith at 18 degrees of Scorpio. The 22nd degree and the 18th degree are two of the most evil degrees in astrology. He has them both. And Lilith in Scorpio is dark, sick, sexual fantasies. And with his moon being in Pisces conjunct Jupiter mixed with everything else going on, he had big delusions. I think that he thought he was in a relationship with this.